G'day everybody and welcome to part two. What we're going to do in this video, we're going to get some of our variables sorted in the background. We're also going to get all of the form resizing sorted and I'll explain what that means in a moment. Then we get the edit menu working and a little bit of background stuff that's going to help us out for the third video and the fourth video for that matter. But for right now, what I'm going to do is I forgot a few little things in the last video, mainly renaming these things down the bottom. So if we come to the menu strip, I'm going to rename this guy to MS main. So MS for menu strip. And for the open file dialog and that, I'm a bit lazy when it comes to these guys. I just call it open file and then save file because I'm nice and lazy. All right, and we'll set those guys up further when we get to the fourth video and we actually need them. But for right now, I want to focus on doing the basic programming in this one. So what I want to do is we're going to handle a few things. First of all is we're going to handle, when they save their files, it's going to have a file name associated to it. We're going to try and remember that file name because we don't want to ask them for the file name every single time they save, just the first time. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to mark the text box as dirty if anything ever changes, if they change a style, if they make any additions or delete anything, or even insert a picture, we're going to set the stat status to dirty. Now, what the hell does that mean? Well, dirty is basically something has changed and it hasn't been saved. All right? If your document is not considered dirty, then everything has been saved and you haven't changed it. For instance, if we have a quick look up here with this little asterisk, that's actually telling me that my form is dirty because I haven't saved some of the changes that I've made, namely because I've named these guys down here. If I click the Save button, that little asterisk goes away and my form is not considered dirty anymore. But let's get into some of the guts of the programming. And follow me if you can, everybody. I want you to start by right-clicking and going View Code. I'm going to zoom in on this guy. You don't need to. And we're going to start up here. We're going to start by adding a couple of variables. The first one's going to be the file name. So store the file of the document. So by default, it's going to be empty. So what we do with that is we need to dim our variable, give it a name. What's a better name than file name? And it's going to be a string. And it's going to be an empty string by default. So equals, quote, quote. All right. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to have a Boolean variable to mark if the document is dirty or not. So remember, if the document is, or the current, I should say, current document is dirty. All right. So dim, dirty, as, and we'll, it's either dirty or it isn't. So that variable type is a Boolean. And I'm not going to put any default value in him just yet. I'll, I'll talk about that later. And this is set up ready for us to program for later on. So what we're going to deal with right now is probably the easiest problem we've got so far. If I start my program, you'll notice I didn't change the form border style on the last one. I did briefly talk about that, and I wanted to explain it now. If I resize my form, it's quite nice because it allows us to set how big we want the form and how much we can see and things like that. But you'll notice our text box does nothing. It just stays the same size. So what we need to do is we actually need a bit of code to say when the form resizes, resize the text box. Now before we use the text box, let's name this guy. It's another thing I forgot to do. I'm terrible. Scroll up in your properties. It's a rich text box, so RTB. What's he going to contain? Our content. So I'm going to call him RTB content. It's up to you, but just remember his name. And what I'm going to do, there's an event on the form that we're going to put all this code in. So just click on the events button here. Let's scroll down a little bit to find resize. Yep, and let's double click on this box right here. And that's put us in this little bit of event code. All right. So what do we want to do when the main form resizes? Well, then we want to resize the text box. Now, we don't have to resize the menus or the tool strip because they automatically do that. It's just built in to their behaviors. But the text box isn't. So what do I want to affect? I want to affect the text box. And what's specifically about it? Well, it's size. And I want a new one. So bear that in mind. If you quickly have a look at what's come up down here, its data type is size. So what we do is you go equals new size, open a bracket. I don't even, you probably don't know what a drawing point is, so don't stress. 
what you do is click on this and read this one. We're going to give it a width and we're going to give it a height. So how wide and how high are we going to make this box? We're going to try and match the width and the height of the form. Right? And to get that, you do, to get the width specifically, let's go me.clientsize.width. Now the reason we use client size and not just dot .width is because the client size gives you everything inside the form. It doesn't give you the border or anything else extra. It just gives you dot .width, um, sorry, the width that's available. So realistically, we'd do the same thing for height, me.clientsize.height. No errors, so let's try this guy out. Press start, and you'll see by default the text box is already wrapped to the corners. If I resize it, it goes with it. However, here's the problem. If you have a look down, you can't actually see the bottom of the form. On the right here, you can see just a snippet of the box. Unfortunately, you can't see the bottom, and I can guarantee you it's down there. It's probably about down here, unfortunately. And that's because when we resize the height of it, it doesn't take into account the menu strip and the tool strip. So we actually need to minus the height of these two guys. So to do that, we just go client size dot height minus ts main dot height which was our tool strip minus and then the menu strip dot height all right and that's going to take away the height of both of them start it up i still can't see the bottom of it and that's because i discovered you'll see it's still there but it's just tiny you can see it's overlapping the cursor by a tiny amount what I found out, and I think it's to do with where the text box is and where the tool strip is, there's a tiny little gap there. All right, so what I ended up having to do is put minus three on the end. And then I can see the bottom of the text box. Okay. Now, don't ask me why that happens, it just does. So if you need to pause the video and do that, I suggest you do, because we're going to continue on to the text box. So for this guy here, any time the style changes or the text changes or the size changes, then we're going to set the text box to dirty or the document to dirty. All right? And then why? the reason we do that is because then when they try to exit the program, if the document's dirty, we ask them to save. If they go to make a new document and the current one is dirty, then we ask them, do they want to save before they create a new one? Things like that. All right. So what we do is you double click on the text box to get to the text changed event. But we don't want to handle just um, checks change, we want to handle the style change and the size change as well. So what we do there, you'll have a look on the far right, this says handles text change. Well we want to add more to that. And the way you add more is you put a comma and just type in the next one. So I want it to handle RBT content style changed and RBT content size changed. And now whenever the text changes, the style changes or the size changes, then this code will execute. And this is really, really easy code. Set the document, whoop, document as dirty. You simply do dirty equals true. And that's it. Now on the other hand, when the program starts up, we don't want the document to be set as dirty. All right. So what we're gonna do in the form load is we're going to set dirty to false. All right. And that's really easy to do. And I'm gonna show you another way to get there. If you click up here in Form Main Resize, I'm going to go up to the event on the top right, find Load, click on that, and we're going to do our code in here. And as I said, it's as simple as going dirty equals false. Set the default document, let's say, to not dirty. Now the reason we do it in Form Load and not up here, like traditionally I would have just gone equals false. But the reason we do it in the form load is because as soon as the form is generated, the text box changes. And that means dirty is set to true straight away. However, by putting dirty equals false, what happens is the form's loaded up, the text changes, it gets set to dirty, and then the form load goes off and it changes it back to false. And that way, when the form loads up, nothing's changed, so it's not considered dirty. All right? and then we can move on slightly. I promise we're going to do the edit menu, and let's do that 
now. So let's start with the cut guy. Now if you've watched, let's double click on cut to get to the code. If you've watched my text box video, then you'll know exactly what function to use here. And I'm not even going to put a comment in because it's so bloody easy. We're going to use rbt contents dot cut. And it's literally the same thing for the other three buttons. So go double click on copy, rbt content dot copy, rbt content dot paste, and for select all, same bloody thing. Select all. And that's it. So that's it for this video, everybody. If I've gone way too fast for you, rewind a little bit, have a look at what you've missed out, and just make sure you're caught up for the next part because that's when we're going to get into the really deep stuff of getting all these style buttons and the size one working. So I'm going to save you are too, and I'll see you in the next video, everybody. Thanks for watching.